All right, everyone. Welcome to class two of Recording Studio Fundamentals. How's everyone doing today? Uh, good, Professor. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. Thanks. Um, yeah, so we're still missing a few people. Yeah, we're still missing a few people. They'll get here, I'm sure. Good. So a couple things. The first thing is that it, a couple of people have emailed me with, uh, they don't want their CUNY email address as their main correspondence. So if you want me to email you somewhere else, let me know. Send me an email with the correct email. I'll put it into my spreadsheet. And then when I send out information, then you'll be privy to that. So that's the first thing. And um, the second thing is that I have set up I sent you all out a link, right? And you should bookmark that link because this is the way our class is going to run this semester. I've got everything is I'm going to treat OneDrive like it's Dropbox and this comes from the college. I would have sent you all invites directly, but some of you don't have CUNY email addresses and it won't let me do that, but it will let you all access this folder here with, with that link. So I would bookmark that, and this is where all of our class materials are going to be deposited. So let's go over this really quickly. So I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit easier. All right, so there's Recording Studio Fundamentals. When I click on that, let me just resize this and center it, and then I can zoom in. So here we've got four folders. The first folder is Class Info, and you have some of this stuff already, but it's here for you if you need to find it again. You can just download that at will. And if I go back in this folder, you'll find class materials. So for class two, I've got some stuff here. You won't need to download this stuff. If you, you can if you want, but this is basically for me to have so that I can have my teaching materials here. One thing, though, that you might be interested in, and we'll get into this today, is this PDF here that says Pro Tools Shortcuts. Now, shortcuts are key commands. And this will go through a lot of key commands. So you will not be menu diving. So Command N, and it gives you the Windows and the Apple equivalents. So f for a new session, it would be Command N, right? So we'll, I'll be telling you these things as we go through this, but this is a repository for all of all of that stuff. There's also a website, which I, I think it's it's a little bit more beneficial if you are um, if you are somewhat savvy with Pro Tools. But if I go to just Google Pro Tools keyboard shortcuts, there's a really cool website. Let's see. Oh, here we go. So this is Pro Tools Keyboard Shortcuts .com, right? And it's really cool. So if you, so we're going to go over Keyboard Focus today, right? Keyboard Focus. It's it's a mode that Pro Tools has where if you push the letter C, you copy something, and you see when you hover over here the key gets lit up. So that's kind of cool. So, right, it tells you all of these key things so you can reference this stuff. And then, you know, it's got other key commands, right? So, start record. It's either command and the space bar, which are green. It's either F12 on the top uh, row. Probably not going to use F12. What I will say that if you have your laptop, you're going to be at, you'll be able to work. It's not a problem. But having an extended keyboard for any DAW 
with the with the numeric keypad on the far right hand side, that's that's a big plus. You know, uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier in a lot of ways. For example, if I want to start recording something, I would push the number three on the keypad over here, and that would start. Alternatively, there are other options: Command, Spacebar. So there's more than one way to do all sorts of stuff. But this is a cool website. And I, I go here every once in a while to try to learn a few new. I don't know all of these. You don't need to know all of these. But there are a handful that you should have memorized. And this is the same for every DAW you use. They all have keyboard commands, keyboard shortcuts, key commands, whatever you want to call them. And getting these things together makes you like a ninja when you're working. You can fly. If you have to constantly go be menu diving and looking for the function and clicking on the on the GUI and all that stuff, you just it's just very cumbersome and a big part of working on this a, a big part of this study is to become so fluent with the software, no matter what software you end up using, whether it's Pro Tools, Logic, Reaper, Cubase, uh, Performer, Studio One, Ableton, GarageBand, to get into a flow so that it's an instrument that you're playing. That's my concept, is that a DAW is a music creation tool. That's what an instrument is. An, a piano is, is a music creation tool tool. It has keys that you push down, which in turn activate little hammers that strike strings. And all those strings are tuned a certain way. And you, depending upon your skill level, determines the kind of music you can create with that instrument. Violin, electric, all, the, all these instruments. They're all music generating devices. And so is a DAW, so is a sequencer, a digital audio workstation. It's just, it's a little bit different because you're not physically touching the instrument, right? You're touching a keyboard, a computer keyboard, a MIDI keyboard, um, a mouse, a microphone, right? Those are the things that you're using to input. And there are alternate controllers. There's things called launch pad, which are a little like a, a, a rectangle, a square uh, console that's got pads on it that you can push they're touch sensitive and you can input data that way but it's not like touching an instrument where your hands are touching a mechanical um, a mechanical uh, a device that's creating a sound so learning key commands keyboard commands keyboard shortcuts whatever you want to call it it will totally change and make the way that you work much more fluent. And so I will be introducing them to you a few at a time. And like I said, I do not know all of them. I doubt that I even know half of them. There are so many keyboard commands. There are some that I don't need to use because I'm not doing sound design for films, right? And, and I'm not doing voiceover editing and dialogue editing and dubbing and all that stuff. I don't do that. So there's all this functionality that's built into these DAWs that helps the workflow for that particular um, discipline. But for what I do composing, the ones that I know the most, I, I know all those keyboard commands and it helps me go much, much quicker. So yeah. All right. So that's that. Let's go back though to our OneDrive. So there's a folder in here called Updated Class Info for both of my classes this semester. So this has it's a PDF that you can download. And let me just put the uh, link for this into the chat so that you guys can all access this right now. There you go. So this the folder... The Recording Studios Fundamentals Masterclass folder is at this link, right? So each master folder contains two subfolders, class materials and assignment. Actually contains more than that now. This is when I first made it. 
you will upload your assignments each week to the dated folder inside the assignments folder. Now, if you're subscribing to Pro Tools, here's the info from the avid.com website. After you sign in, you can navigate to my account and I've blacked out things where I do not want the world to see some personal information. So I couldn't do this last week because I didn't have it together. But you'll see your account and you'll see a box that looks like this, right? And then at the bottom of the page, you'll see something that says linked iLock account. Make sure your iLock account is linked. And there should be instructions about how to do that on the Avid page. If not, um, let me know and I will send you a link. Then you'll have here something that says view my products. This is after you've uh, purchased a subscription to Pro Tools. So you click on view my pot products and then it brings up this tab, right? And this tab will uh, show you that you've what your license is, your plan, right? So you click on the Pro Tools annual upgrade and support tab will open up to this and then it will also show you this. And here is a list of all the things that you are and are not to download and install. So, you, oh, I have my system ID here. Oh, well. Um, Pro Tools installer, right? Not None of this and not these two. They've got the word no after them. Whoops, excuse me. Getting a little crazy here. Then down here, Pro Tools plugins. The first one and the bottom three. So first Air Instruments bundle, 11 effects bundle okay if you get that you want to download that that's fine but the air effects the air instruments the most important ones are the first air instruments or and and both of these right so whichever one has the highest number so this is 19.2 and this is 2018.3 so 19.2 so you download this one and it make sure you ex download expand 2 that's very important so instruments bundle and expand to if you want to get 11 effects bundle and the air effects bundle do that too all right so this is a little bit incorrect right here a quick link to the playlist with all these basic setups that are in short videos six minutes five minutes seven minutes eight minutes four minutes this is 12 minutes right this one's very long but the first six of these are, are pretty short, right? And you can get them in bite-sized chunks. So I made those, I made these a few years ago. I think I made these in 2018. They still are relevant to our class today. So, um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to, don't download this till tomorrow. I'm going to clean up some of this uh, and then upload it again for you. All right. Um, any questions on any of that? Uh, yeah, I have a question. This is Justin. Um, hey, Justin. The link that you sent in the chat, and I don't know if anybody else is having this problem, but it tells me that I can't view it, um, that it doesn't exist, or that I don't have permission. Um, and in the folder, uh, the link that you sent us uh, the other day, all I have is assignments. Right. I've. I've. Right. So I've uploaded. I've changed that right today and yesterday so there are more folders in there now so i'll here this is this is a link to this one see if you can four new messages let's see what everybody's saying so you're all having that problem here try this link that should get you to this folder here Copy. And yeah, it's still in there. It just says assignments, the only folder that I can access. Anyone with the link can edit. Copy link. Send it in here. So it's letting me in on on um, 
Safari. I'm signed in on Chrome. I'm not signed in on Safari and it's letting me in. Okay, that seems to work now. Yay, yay, nay, got it. So people seem to have better luck with that. So don't load any, don't download anything until tomorrow. Let me fix that PDF and upload it again. And it'll, there'll be like a version two written after it. So you'll know it's been adjusted with this link on it. All right, I'll clean that up and uh, a few other things on that. So if there's anybody still having a problem getting to this, but this is this is going to be where all our assignments are. And then the, the feedback, every week I make little five five minute videos, 10 minute videos, however long it takes me to get through your assignment, where I give you like a private lesson with what you've done and ways to improve it. Okay, so you'll be able to download that and keep that for yourself. All right. And um, I have been uploading. I did upload last week's class. Right. And it's on our playlist here. Uh, recording studio fundamentals so the class is here now some of you uh, somebody emailed me Hold all on. right everyone about you know you don't speak English well well if you click on this closed caption here it will let you everyone can hear me. there'll be text We're that you good. can read Give me a thumbs up good all right Noya so that'll help you out and this definitely sounds and looks better than Zoom, what's on here uh, when you're watching it. And I've been doing this now. I, I make YouTube videos all the time, so I'm not bad at doing it. Um, yeah, but this is just like as if I was doing a live stream and I'm just putting it up there. I, I'll cut out a few things here and there, but basically I, I really just need to get it up and you know, I'll try to get chapters on here every week that'll help your navigation. And something I learned today about YouTube is that, see, if you click on and open up this area here, the chapters are here, but down at the bottom, there are these other chapters too, which is kind of cool, which is really yeah. easy for you to navigate. So what's that? that's very helpful. I just saw that for the first time today, that down at the bottom of these. All right. So that should help out everybody. All right, so you're, you're not going to download that PDF with all the other information on it till tomorrow after class tonight before I go to bed. I will update that PDF, delete the one that's in there, and upload the new one with the class info, and there'll be some corrections to it with a different link, and that'll um, really be helpful, I think, for everybody. Actually, let me just paste this link in here so that I've got it. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to get into um, we're going to get into Pro Tools today. All right, we're going to spend vast more majority of the class getting familiar with the GUI of the edit window, some of the basic setup that I want you to do. That so all the stuff is can, is in bite sized chunks on those introduction videos that I showed you a second ago. And we're going to start working today. You're going to have an assignment that's going to be due next week, the first draft, and then the final one is going to be due in two weeks. So that's basically how we're going to work. I'm going to give you an assignment. You're going to hand in the first draft. I'll give you some feedback, and then you'll clean it up and finish up the assignment. And each assignment will build on new techniques. So what I'll show you is how to manually edit and move notes around. And then I will also show you how to do more um, automated ways of editing notes uh, using um, different kinds of functionality that's found inside of Pro Tools. But part of learning how to use Pro Tools is getting good mouse skills, right? So I want to show you how to use the mouse to affect notes and some of the uh, key switches and stuff like that. And I've got an alternate view here where I can show you what I'm doing on the keyboard and mouse. And um, yeah, I can put that in the corner also so you can see it. So that that's good. But uh, I always want to do something a little extra in class to expand your minds a little bit. And 
introduce you to some maybe new ways of thinking about music and alike. So what I'd like to do today is talk about sound. And sound and music is everywhere. You know, you can create sounds that are totally unique and that can be used in musical endeavors. You could be walking down the street and hear a sound and take out your phone and capture that and get it into the computer and use it to create a new instrument. And I'll show you some of that as well. But what I want to do first is play you a, a few videos from a guy named Diego Stucco. And Diego is a sound designer. He does a lot of work for this company called Spectrasonics that makes incredible software instruments. It's run by a man named Eric Persing and Diego creates sounds from them. He does programming, he records sounds, he treats them, he takes instruments and transforms them into sounds that you've never heard before. He might take a piano and light it on fire and, you know, an old beat up piano and capture that being played and make that into an instrument. So he's got a few videos on his YouTube channel and music is everywhere. Just remember that. So we'll take a look, look at these and I'll be back after each one to talk for a minute. So rather than using a, an instrument to create all those sounds, he captured those sounds. He created and captured those sounds, got them inside the computer. In some cases, he was changing the sounds as he was recording them, as I showed you with that API lunchbox and the EQs. And in other cases, once he got those sounds inside of the computer, he would transpose them down. He would add some EQ to maybe beef them up. He would add some, some reverb and delay to make them spacious. He would you know, possibly put them through effects that add harmonics to excite the sound and add some grind and distortion to them. And then balance, then he just basically placed them all on the timeline so that they unfolded with the, uh, the, the little logo that he, the DTS logo, so that he basically, instead of writing notes out on paper, he placed sounds on different tracks strategically across the timeline to unfold in a way that accompanied the moving image. And he let the moving image dictate the structure of what he was creating. So it's, it's a very different way of writing and creating music than, you know, noodling around on the piano or coming up with a melody and, you know, recording that and harmonizing it. And it's, I don't want to say which one is better or worse. I'm just ex exposing you to ways of creating music that you might not have thought of at this point. And these are the kinds of things that you can do inside of a recording software like any of the DAWs that we've mentioned. But what we're going to be using is Pro Tools. Now, I will say that to create what he's done there, we get into that stuff by Audio MIDI 2. Right, we, we create sample libraries to play from the keyboard and that will bring me to, uh, let me just show you some things that I have done. So right now I'm working on a film for ESPN, whoops, excuse me. And it's about a woman named Tamika Ketchings and she's a very well-known women's basketball player. And so this was in my basement in November I have a microphone set up and a, and a basketball. And the reason I was in the basement is because it was cold outside and windy the day I did this. And down in the basement, I've got a concrete floor and there's a lot of sound in the room. And I, this is a stereo microphone and it's hooked up to a, a recorder that's up on this table over here. So I got, and let me just show you this a little bit. I'm not going to play this whole thing. So I'm recording each one of these dribbles. And then
and then a treble slap. Okay, so the reason I did the fast dribbling, the rhythmic dribbling, is that you, if I did the individual ones and tried to make a fast rhythm with them, it, it wouldn't sound as good as taking the dribble that I did, the continuous bouncing, chopping each one of those bounces up into a little audio file and then programming it so that I could play it on the keyboard. So let me just show you about that. Uh, right here. So I imported all that into Pro Tools, right? And these are, this is the recorded, this is the original sound here. Uh, hold on one sec. Here we go. Right. That's the fast dribbles. This is the individual dribbles. Now they're softer than my phone was. So what I did was I processed them with a bunch of what's called plugins. And this is the these are the mixed sounds. Much beefier. Right. And then the fast dribbles here. Then, this is a basketball, and this is two, bas two basketballs. There's this. Now, you can sort of see that that's the kind of thing that Diego was doing, where there's actually almost a pitch to that. And I did that with a lot of different plugins, and then I reversed it so that there's a swell, there's a hit, and then there's a fade out. Right, so that's kind of cool. So what I did with those was that I programmed them into a piece of software called Contact. And I am, so these are my sounds. I'm playing them from a keyboard. So if I were to show you this, uh, let's see this. Right, and then if I go, that's the bounce slap. And then up here are the fast dribbles. And then there's stuff that you could do afterwards, but let me just play you a track that I wrote for this film that uses those basketballs as um, part of the rhythmic bed. Here we go. So you can hear the basketballs bouncing in the background as rhythm. So you can see that as a composer, I'm the only person in the world that has this, these sounds, right? I can use them wherever I want. I created an instrument with them, an original instrument that nobody else has, and I can use it in this project. So 
I typically create sounds for every project that I'm working on or create a template that is unique to that project that gives it a sum of it that gives a signature sound to it. Right. And there's subliminal stuff going on here when there are there are plenty of scenes in the film where there's hard edged competition going on. And I've written what's called highlight music, very energetic driving music. And I'm using those basketballs as part of the rhythm bed in there. And it all sort of ties it together from my perspective. So just basically thinking about sound a little bit differently and thinking about music a little bit differently and how you can sort of use this stuff to um, create in a way that is different than what you're used to. Let's put it that way. Because those of you that are graduate students, and I do have a few music majors in this class, I believe, you've been trained on your instrument to play your instrument your whole life and you've trained to get dexterity on your instrument to get control over your instrument you've learned repertoire whether it's classical literature or whether it's if you're a jazz major whether you're learning your standards or your you know all the tunes by duke ellington by charlie parker by john coltrane you study how to like lester young solos and charlie parker solos and you transcribe them and you learn how to play them that's incredible work and all of us need to do stuff like that if you're a classical musician you learn to play music by Bach by Beethoven all the classics you work on 20th century music and you learn how to create on your instrument and get facility on your instrument as composers we I think differently about the creation of music and music is organized sound and that opens up a large world. And that's one thing where an, a software like Pro Tools can really be helpful. Okay, so any questions on any of that? All right. So we're going to be moving forward here. And we're just going to just start right at the beginning. I'm going to quit out of Pro Tools and I'm going to go over some of the stuff that I went over last week. So you've downloaded Pro Tools, you've installed it in your computer, correct? And it's going to be in your applications folder. And what I typically do, and this is it, this purple with this upside down V, I typically just, dra I've dragged that, clicked option, drag that onto my dock so that I can access it here. So I've got my dock organized with music software that I use, authorization software over here, and then videos and other stuff on the left-hand side. So all my music stuff is over here. So I want to open Pro Tools. I can just click on this right now and Pro Tools will open up. And we went over this a little bit last week, but you'll see right now the splash screen will come up in a second. There we go. And right now what's happening is Pro Tools is loading in all these plugins. And the very first time you load Pro Tools in, this may take a minute. It may take a few minutes. Pro Tools creates a playlist and preferences that memorizes these things so that the next time through, it doesn't have to check whether they're valid or they work. So this is your dashboard here. And this is where you're going to create a new session. So... It's got three levels. We're not going to worry about projects right now. That's not for our class, but we're going to just basically stay right at the beginning with create. And one of the things that I'm going to do with you is I'm only going to show you the stuff you need to learn to do the assignment and build every week. Now, I'm going to go over something today and I'll show you more than you'll need for next week, but I won't go into detail about it. Right, so I'll just go into detail and show you stuff that you need to get the assignments done and we'll build from there. So this is our dashboard and we're going to work from create. And we're going to, this is where our title is. And I'm going to create a, a title for a song right now and I'm going to call it right now All The Things and you'll see why. There'll be an underscore and there'll be today's date. I think today's the 9th underscore and my initials and this is the naming convention for all of our projects the name with no spaces 
and capital letters for each word, an underscore, the date with dashes. You can't use backslashes for dates, so you have to, in Pro Tools, it's elite, what they call illegal characters. And then underscore and the name. So let me just do this. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Right, and you'll replace my initials with your initials. You replace the name with the name of the project you're working on. And let's see, let's do this. And I'm going to pop this. In. Let me just title this properly and then I'll pop it in the chat. I've got this written out in the class preferences. But this way it's just on a right there and you can download that. Okay, so I've named this. We're going to use local storage, right? We're not going to do cloud. We're not going to create from template. Don't worry about that yet. And then down here, we want to set this stuff up. So let me zoom in so it's easy for you to see. Our, we went over this last week, but I'm going over it again because repetition is the way you learn this stuff. And I'll talk about that while you're working. Uh, with your working methods. So the file type we're going to use is bwf.wav, that's broadcast wave file. We're going to use a sample rate, you're going to use a sample rate of 44.1, okay? And remember I said this last week, that wherever you see like a box, a rectangle, or any image on Pro Tools where there's a triangle, whether it's facing upwards, downwards, or sideways, that means that there is a hidden menu under there. So for example, 44 sample rate, 44.1 kilohertz, if I click on this triangle, it will show you all these other options. Now, when you click on this, you might not see all these options. It only shows you the options that are available with the system you currently are using. So that depends upon your audio interface, your computer, your operating system, all this stuff. So I have all of these options available. You may only have these three or these two, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. We're just going to work with 44.1. Whatever the bit depth is here, and we're going to learn a little bit about bit depth later in the semester, you want to set it to 24 bit. All right. And then don't worry about the IO settings. Just make sure they say last used. And then the other bit, and let me zoom out and move this over to the middle and zoom back in. We're going to use interleave to make sure that that's clicked and it will probably default to this we want to prompt for location okay and then we're going to create a session and that's going to take me to some something that looks like this and what i want you to do is navigate to your desktop and i want you to create a folder on your desktop that's so that you know what it is, I'm just going to call it RSF Projects 2022. Something like that. Something that's named and all of your projects are going to live inside of this. So I'm going to save all the things into the Recording Studio Fundamental Project. Now, if you yours opens up like this, click on this little downward facing triangle here and it opens it up. Okay, so and I'm going to. And then I clicked save. Now, this is the edit window, the edit page. Before we do this, I want to go over again. I went over this with you last week, but I want to make sure that this is really, really honed in every class because you're, most of you are going to make the mistake and I'm going to have to send your projects back to you. All right, but you'll eventually get it. Uh, and only get, you only get it by repetition. So the hierarchy that Pro Tools uses is the big global suitcase that everything fits in or folder or knapsack or box, container, whatever you want to use to describe it. But the big container that every asset that Pro Tools needs to run your project is located inside the session folder, the session folder. And that is this folder right here. Okay. So if you open the session folder, and there's two ways you can do this. I don't like 
I like to see things in list view. That's my preference. I'm used to it. It's orderly. It does things and you can change how you see things very easily. It's just very, it's, it's, I'm very used to it. All the other ways don't seem as organized to me. And that's just my own preferences. You can do whatever you want. But if you've done it this way, you can do one of two things. You can either double click here and it opens up inside of the session folder. Or you can go right like this and then everything folds down, uh, comes underneath. So let me zoom in a little bit. And we're going to talk about this line here in a minute. But what their Pro Tools will do will create folders all of these folders and a wave cache and these folders are all empty notice I'm clicking on them there's nothing in them they are there in advance prepared and ready for assets to be deposited inside of these folders okay and then this right here this is the session file session folder inside of the folder is the session file you'll always know it's the session file because it has dot ptx as an extension session folder session file this is the file that contains all the settings to run your pro tool session it needs to reference stuff inside of these folders and the wave cache in order to run properly. So let's just leave that there for now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this open and you'll see all these things here, right? And then I'll go back and let's see, where is our, here we go. I'm going to close this session, right? I'm going to, I'm not going to say, I will save. Now, here's the session folder. Notice that all those folders disappeared. They disappeared because no assets got put into them. We haven't done anything that required them to be used. So Pro Tools got rid of them. Don't worry, when you open up Pro Tools again, all of those files will come back. I'll show you that. Right, I opened up that session and boom, all those files are back. And let's get rid of this. Okay. So this is our Pro Tools edit window. And let me make this a little bit smaller. And zoom in and then I'll zoom out and move back and forth. So there's three, three basic areas. This top area here, this is your toolbar. This middle area here, this is your these are your rulers, and then this is your edit down here, your edit page. So this is the edit window, and then this is the edit page down in this area. So let's start with the toolbar, and I'll go over all this stuff, and then I'll show you how to customize it so that it only shows you the stuff you need to know. Most of you are working on laptops. I've got a fairly large screen here, so I can have everything open and see it, but you guys don't have that. So let me show you how to customize that. But let's go through all this stuff, and then some of the stuff we won't need to access right now. So I won't go into too much detail. Okay, so on the far left is your edit modes, and there are four of these. Give me one sec. Shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. By the end of the semester, we will have gone through all of these. But for right now, you will set up your session and just click on grid so that it's blue. Now notice there's a little triangle next to here. If I click on this, it turns into purple, relative grid. Just click again and make sure it's blue, all right? Now to the left of this is the zoom controls. I'm not gonna go over that, and then these are zoom memories. We're not gonna go over that, and then we're not gonna go over these things down here, but this bit up here we're gonna go over. This is your, these are your tools, right? So this is a magnifying glass. This is your trim tool. 
This is your selector tool. This is your grabber. Oops. This is a speaker for playback, for scrubbing. We're not going to worry about that. We're not going to worry about this either. But this is your pencil tool. We're going to learn about this soon. But trim, selector, and grabber. Those are the three that you are going to be using as soon as possible. And then if you click on the top, all three of these become blue, and that becomes the smart tool. I never use that. That's not cumbersome for me. I use these individually, and then I use key commands on my keyboard, uh, my music, my computer keyboard to navigate and like to scroll between all those. So, for example, um, right, I'm not doing anything with the mouse right now. I'm just holding down a couple of keys and pressing numbers, and it's moving back and forth. So that's the way I work. That's the quickest for me. So this is your, these are your tools. These are your edit modes. These are your tools. Those are the two things that we're going to work on. And with the tools, there are only four of these tools that we're going to be using. And for the first couple of weeks, we're only going to be using these three. Right here, let me just fix this up. This is your counter your main counter. This counts time. And if you've got a little triangle right here, that means that there are more things. So you could set this up. I've got it set up to bars and beats, minutes and seconds, time code, which we're not, we're not going to use either of those, but I'll show you what they are. We, and then feats and frame, feet and frames. You have no, no need to know that. And samples, you have no need to know that either. So we'll put that, we're musicians, we work with bars and beats. Right here is your grid control. And if you click on this rectangle, this should always be on for our class so that it's lime illuminated. And this gives you the resolution. And if you click on this resolution, you have a bunch of options. So I'll just sit it for now as a quarter note and I'll show you that inside of here later today. This is your transport. We are not going to be using that. As a matter of fact, we're going to be hiding that. And these are your MIDI controls and we are going to be using this. So let's just go over this a little bit. This is our count off. We're going to be using this to count off before we start recording. This is our meter. So count off, we have a one, I have it set for one bar. You can change that and I'll show you how to do that later. Excuse me. Today. This is our meter. We're currently in 4-4. All these can be changed and our tempo is at 120 beats per minute. All of these things can be changed. This is just what it defaults to. Right here, we've got some other controls. The only two that need to be blue for us for the beginning of the semester is the metronome for the click track and the conductor track. There's a little guy standing there. You see like a little conductor with a baton in his right hand and his left hand is gesticulating wildly. These are your MIDI time control, sync controls. We don't need to see that. And this is your meter. Gives you an output level. And we're, we do need to see that. So... This is what I want all of you to do is right here in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a circle and let me zoom in on that with a downward facing triangle. And when you click on that, it gives you a menu and it lets you sh show and hide different parts of the toolbar. So we, I'm only going to leave the ones in that we're going to use this semester and you'll see these things start to disappear. So we don't need the zoom controls, so I'm going to turn those off. So you see they disappeared. We don't need the transport, so you're going to see this is going to disappear. And we don't need synchronization. Now you may have something called the universe. Make that off. Keep that off. Track lips, list, MIDI input display, leave all that on. So we only need to see... Uh, MIDI controls and output meters. That's it. 
a MIDI input. Like we don't need to see zoom. We don't need to see the transport. We don't need to see synchronization. So this is what we're, we're going to see. Let me put this in the middle. Let me zoom in on that and let me do another screen shot of this. And this is tool bar set up. And I'll pop that right in the chat. Great. You guys all with me? Yay, nay? All right. This this first couple of weeks are really hairy because you know, it's a lot of technical stuff. It's very pedantic. It's not really a lot of fun. But if I don't show you this stuff, you'll be making a lot more mistakes later on. All right? Okay. So, we're all, and the reason why we're only seeing this many things is that you guys are going to be on your laptop. So, you might only be able to see this much of the screen, right? And having this toolbar filled with all that other stuff, you won't be able to see everything on the toolbar. If you've got a 13 inch laptop screen, right? That becomes very difficult. Okay, so that's the, that's the toolbar. Let's take a look at our rulers. So the, these are the names of the rulers right here. And then this is rulers measure things, right? And these are the things that they're measuring on the timeline over in this area here. So the things that you can measure are bars and beats, samples, tempo, meter, key, and markers. We do not need to see all of these. So we're going to get rid of a bunch of these. And the same thing is that there's a downward facing triangle up here. We're going to click on this and we're going to get rid of samples and we're going to get rid of key. We only need to see markers, tempo, and meter for now. All right. And that becomes much better. Now, you got a big empty space down here, right? You want to fill it with something. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I need to get a click, a click track. And I'm going to show you how to automate that in a minute. But if we go to the track window a menu up here on the top and I click on that, I can go all the way to the bottom and create a click track. And that's a click track. So this is a track, right? Pro Tools has several kinds of tracks. The only tracks that we're going to be worried about in this class are instrument tracks, augs inputs, and audio tracks. Just those three tracks. There are many other tracks in Pro Tools, but for our class, this is fundamentals. We're only going to be worried about those first three tracks that I mentioned, and we'll be going over all of those today. Uh, no, actually, no, no. We'll just be going over the MIDI, the instrument tracks today. Okay, but this is a click track, and if we look over here, right, this is all the information about the track. So we've got the track header over here that's got all sorts of, oh, sorry, over here, this is the track header. It's got the name and it's got the track view selector, the automation mode. We don't have to worry about all that stuff. The only thing you need to know is that the name, and you can name this whatever you want. If you double click on that, another window pops up and you can name it whatever you'd like. Hit OK. And that this is white. That should not be white. So if you hold down the option key and click on that, it becomes grayed out. Right here, this column right here is our instrument column. We need to see that. We need to see inserts. Then there's sends, IO, and real-time properties. We don't need for right now to see sends, and we don't need to see real-time properties. So what we can do is we can go right over here, edit window view selector. We can click there, and we can get rid of sends and real-time property. Right? And we've gained a lot of window space. And you might not even need to see the output. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go over that um, while you're working in MIDI instruments. 
Okay, so this is basically what your Pro Tools session should look like for the first month of the class or so, next four weeks. Now, let me go through some more setup things. If you have a Mac, you're going to be going into your system preferences and you're going to be clicking on Spotlight. And then you're going to go to Keyboard Shortcuts. And then right here, you're probably on your Mac, Show Spotlight Search and Show Finder search window, they are probably checked like this. You want to uncheck them. You do not want to have them happening inside of Pro Tools. But we need these key commands here for Pro Tools. All right. If we go to keyboard, up, up here, uh, no, at some point during the class semester, we are going to want to check this so that F1, F2 are standard function keys. You don't have to do that right now, all right? But we are going to have to do that at some point. Then the next thing that you're going to have to set up is you're going to have to go to your mouse, if you have a mouse, and you are going to make sure that secondary click, which is your right click, is activated. So that's the stuff you have to set up in your system preferences. You have to do all of those things. So do them one at a time. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to Setup, which is the pull-down menu here, right? And at the bottom, it says Preferences. You want to click on those, and another window shows up. And the very first window... This is the one that's going to be very important for us to set up correctly. And what I'll do is this again, this is all gone over, but I will take a screenshot of this just like that. And I will pop it into the chat in a second. So the way that we want to set this up is tool tips, function and details. Did you notice how when I hovered over something, a little balloon showed up with the net, like right there, you could see I'm hovering over the pencil tool. And it's telling me that there's the pencil tool right there. Tool tips. That'll happen with this right here. Okay. The next thing you want to do is organize your plugin menus by category and manufacturer. And I will go over that in a minute and why that's important. Uh, don't worry about the theme. We don't need to worry about that right now. Show dashboard window when Pro Tools starts. Now, the big thing for me is over here. And we want to set up our color coding because organization is really important to me. We always want to display marker colors. The MIDI note color shows velocity. Those are both checked. And then these two here, the default track color coding is tracks and MIDI channels. And the default clip color coding is track color. So every track will have a color that we can set. And then inside the track on the timeline, all that information that you'll see, they're called clips. So we want the clips to be the same color as the track, which is why we've selected this. And that will help you to navigate larger sessions because your instruments will all have unique colors. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to go to MIDI, the MIDI tab right here. And we want to make sure that automatically create a click track in a new, in new sessions is set up. This way you won't have to add a click track. So I'll do OK. And all of those are set. Now there's a caveat. Is that you should know how to set those up pretty quickly. It should take you like 30 seconds to get through all that. Because they don't always stay. Pro Tools has this annoying habit of changing the preferences. So, for example, if you send me a session and I go over it on this computer, when I'm done, I have to go back and reset all my preferences to the way that I like to use them because 
you might have different preferences set up or somebody else might have different preferences set up and they overwrite my preferences. Now there's a way to save that as a file that you can import to automatically set up your session again, but let, that's more information than we need to know. All right, so that's all the setup stuff, okay? All right, let me get you that uh, preference setup. Let me name that. Right. All right, that's the display page. Great. Okay, so we can now start to have fun. Now, I don't know what kind of keyboards you have. And again, I'm not in my home studio, so I've got a small keyboard here. It's uh, 61 notes, more than sufficient. You can have one of those little 32 note controllers with mini keys, perfectly sufficient to get through the class. You can have a piano MIDI thing, anything, anything to just input notes. It doesn't matter how big it is, as long as it's got a USB connection. Make sure that your USB is connected to the computer before you turn Pro Tools on. So Pro Tools can see your MIDI controller. All right. Now, we want to add a new track. Also, we're going to hit the return key. Let me do this. Boom. And let me change something over here so that... There you go. And let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, great. Fun, fun with switchers. <laughs> um, okay, so you want to add a track. But before we do that, you see that my counter is on measure 10 here. I want to get back to the beginning. So I'm going to hit the return key right here, and that will make me go back to the beginning. Okay? So I'm going to do command shift and, and can you could see my hands on the on the computer keyboard yay nay oh yes you can right let me move this up a little bit to make it a little bit easier and the mouse is over here let me move the mouse so you could see that okay let me reposition the camera a little bit that's that's a little bit better all right so command shift n like nancy command shift Right, command and shift, and the letter N like Nancy brings us up the new track command, right? Whoops. So what we're going to do is create some new tracks. So for today, I want to create four, not 14, four, so I just type four, new, and this is very important, very important, stereo. All of our instrument tracks are going to be stereo. All of our instrument tracks are stereo. Every instrument track that you are going to create is stereo. And I want four, I want four of them. Oh, hold on a second. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. Okay, so four, stereo, and then we want to go to track type. So we're going to notice how I'm hovering and the name of what it is comes up in that little rectangular box. That's because I've got my tool tips, right? They, I've got them enabled and that I still use tool tips even to this day. All right. So I've been using Pro Tools since 1999 and I love my tool tips. So I click here and you get all these options. Don't worry about all these options. You just want to scroll down to instrument track. Make sure you don't, if you can't hear any sound, 
you're you most likely after doing this, you might most likely have put in an audio track, and I'll show you how to find the difference between that so you can uh, uh, troubleshoot yourself. But you want stereo instrument track. Don't worry, it, it'll it'll default to tips ticks. That's correct, and I'll talk about ticks at some point soon. All right, so that's what we want to do. I'm I'm doing four stereo instrument tracks, and I'm going to hit create right here. Or I can just hit the enter key. And there are our four instrument tracks, right? And notice how they're all, the names are all white. Just hold the option key down and click on any of them and they become unselected. This will default to everything that we need it to be right now. So don't worry about changing anything in this area here. We are not going to work with this until we get to audio. Um, tracks all right so you don't see any instruments right how do you get an instrument in there well you'll see right here we've got a column called inserts inserts a dash e and we are going to insert an instrument track inside of we are going to ins insert an instrument what's called a plugin inside of the instrument track and I'm going to go over signal flow in a class or two, make this a little bit more clear. But just for right now, you'll just be doing what I tell you to do. So you'll notice that there's one, two, three, four, five. And I would call these little rack slots, right? There are five of them. You're going to go to the top one and you're going to just click on it. And it's going to open up another menu. And you're going to select multi-channel plugin and you're going to scroll over to instrument. Now, if you look at my setup, right, it's ridiculous. This is how, how many instruments I have in my computer, all right? You guys won't have that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to scroll and I'm going to go to Air Music Technology and then I'm going to scroll to the bottom of that and I'm going to install something called XPAND2. So the letter X, P-A-N-D, with the letter two, the number two after it. So I'm just going to click on that. Oh, and there, this is the expand to GUI. All right. And you'll notice that it's in here. So if you want to remove this, you click here and you write no insert. So that's expand to. But what I'd like to do for the first track I play is insert something called mini grand because that's a little bit easier to deal with it's just a piano sound so i'm going to click here and go back to air music technology or you guys can go to instrument right and you can it's all alphabetical there's less in this one so i'll scroll down until i see mini grand which is right here and i'm going to click on that and then you'll get mini grand and this is a piano instrument and notice you can click on that keyboard and you can hear sound. One other thing I want to talk to you about, which I should have done before. During your setup, you're going to go to Playback Engine before you start anything. Actually, I should go over this. Um, let me go over this now. Okay, and you're going to go to Playback Engine. And what you're going to all do is select... Mac Pro, Mac Book Speakers, internal, whatever it says, the internal. You don't want the Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. You'll probably only have two options here. It'll be Mac Pro uh, internal or Mac Pro speakers or Mac Book, Mac Book something, or if you're using a Windows PC, the whatever, whatever comes up in this that is not the Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. Later on in the semester, we're going to get an audio interface, and I will, this is, you would, click on that but for right now you just want the internal bit and your buffer size will, will probably don't worry about that right now that'll probably default to either 128 or 256 but just you just want to make sure that your internal is selected and you may have to restart Pro Tools again that may give you a prompt for that okay so this is our mini grand and let's take a look at this this is the GUI graphic user interface for this and if you'll notice that it's got three different sections it's got this top section here, right? It's got this section here, which is like the 
the um, uh, the frame of the of the piano, and then it's got the keyboard section down here. So on the top, it's got this area right here that's called preset. So you'll notice that there's a circle with a pull down menu. That's for saving your own individual presets. But if you click right here where it says factory default, that is the librarian menu. So I'm going to click on that and zoom out. And then you'll have all of these different preset piano sounds. So if I just click real piano for the first one, right? It gives you a basic piano. And you can also customize that right here. We're not going to go over that right now. We'll go over that in a week or two. So you got this sound. How do you record it? Right? Well, the first thing you're going to do is go over here. Uh, I can close this out. It's not, it'll still sound. And you've got mini grand in the first instrument. So you're going to double click on the inst one and you're going to name this piano. And I want to tell you, always name your track before you start to record. Do not record anything with your track unnamed. Only record with your track named. Always name your track before you start recording. I need to say that 500 times and some of you are still not going to do that. And I'll just keep saying it over and over again until you get it. And I'll show you the reason why in a minute. All right. And then I can just simply unhighlight that. So in order to be able to play this from the keyboard, because if I start playing the keyboard now, you're not hearing any sound, right? Well, you have to record enable the piano. And this is right here, track record enable. Click on that and a red light will flash on and off. And now when I play my keyboard, we're gonna hear some sound, hopefully. <laughs> Unless Pro Tools decides to embarrass me. So how do we get to record music? Well, we have to do just a couple of more things. And I'm going to go right up here. Make sure that count off is set is on. It's activated. And we need to set up our tempo. So I'm going to click double click there. And I'm going to do a very slow tempo. I'm going to do 60 beats a minute. All right. So double clicked and I just typed in 60. And you can type in with this keyboard over here to, with this numbers here. You go 60 like that. That's totally fine. And you can also 60 and then hit the return key and that enters it also for those of you that just have laptop keyboards. Make sure that your metronome is active and your conductor track is active. That they When you click on them, they are blue. Because you'll notice if I take the conductor track off, look what happens here. This says 60 now, it goes back to 120. Okay, so let's also set up our metronome preferences. And the way you do that is to double click here and this click count off options comes up. All right, so this is the way that you want to set this up. You want to set it up so that the click only happens when you're recording. You do not want to have it set so that it happens when you play and record. And that's the way it defaults. Click the middle one so that it only plays during the record. And make sure you set up your count off during record. If you like one bar, that's fine. Some of you might like two bars, whatever. One or two bars is fine. So I'm gonna hit OK. Only during record and set up your count off to be one or two bars. Now, when you're working on, in a DAW, you need a reference point a reference point with which to base all of the timing around. And that reference point is the metronome. So for those of you that are 
not music majors and you've never played to a click track, it takes a minute to get used to doing it, right? I've been playing to a click track for decades and I'm very comfortable with it. I don't have a problem with it. I can play around with it. I can play a little ahead. I can play a little bit behind. But it's it's the reference point that you can use because the way that we work is that we play a track and then while that track is playing back, we play a second track against that first track. And we need to have a ref- an absolute reference to where the time is. And that is your click track or your metronome cl- track. That's this guy up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the first eight bars of All the Things You Are, which is a jazz standard, and I'm only going to play the chords in whole notes or half notes on the piano. So that means one chord per measure or two chords per measure. And so it'll be very simple, all right? So here we go. I'm going to hit... Now, to make it record, if you've got the extended keyboard like this, you hit the number three. If you don't, you hit command space bar, but that only works when you've gotten rid of spotlight. Remember, we went to the preferences and we turned spotlight off, all right? So if I was using a laptop right now, I'd have it set up so that I can go command space bar. I'm going to hear eight clicks because I have a count off of two bars. And then on the ninth click, I'm going to start playing. So the click track starts. I'm going to feel the time and I'm going to count in the last four to myself like this. Two, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Very simple chords. Right? Like very square, not hip. Off. All right, so I recorded the first eight bars, a very simple piano part. And I'm going to go to my grabber tool which is right here. And to get to the grabber tool, you can do command and the number four right here. So if I do command three, it's the trimmer, the selector, command two, right? So you see how fast that is to navigate back and forth between those. And then that's my pencil. So that's why I, I like key commands. I don't have to move my mouse. My mouse can stay over here. So I'm going to go to my grabber tool and I'm going to highlight this. So this is called a clip. And these little lines inside of there, those are your MIDI notes. I'm going to explain MIDI in more detail in a future class. But for right now, just take it on my word that those are MIDI notes. And you notice I played four note chords. So that meant every chord had four notes in it. Right? And these are the kinds of note chords that would get me failed from Professor Berkman's class because they are so square. But for our class right now, totally fine. So you'll also notice that the clip right here has the name of the track with a little extension on it, right? If I did not name this track, that would not automatically be named. And so... The next thing to know is that this is a blue the, a blue color. If I want to change the color, and you should get into this right from the beginning, on this left-hand border here, if you double, see that says track color code, right? If I double click on that, a palette will come up. If I, this is the one that's selected, the one that's highlighted right here. So I can make this any color I want. The advice I would give you is that when you're using MIDI tracks, avoid these very bright ones up here on the top, right in this area here, because when you start editing MIDI notes, they're very hard to see in the MIDI editor. So just keep them nice and, um, you know, dark. So you could change to whatever you want. 
this blue up here is fine, but, and this is fine, but these greens and the yellow, you have to be, and the orange up here, you got the gold, you got to be really careful with those. So I'm going to leave this right here. Now, I've recorded a piano part, right? I want to record a bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here and I'm going to name this bass, right? And I'm going to go back to my insert and I'm going to click here and I'm going to go back to either Air Music Technology or Instrument, whichever one you want, and navigate all the way down to the bottom for what's called Expand 2. And this is Expand 2. And this is this and the piano and we're going to also use a drum machine that's in Pro Tools. These are the instruments that we're going to be using this year. This is not a great plug-in, but it's perfectly fine for teaching the tools that we need. And if you're clever and you know how to manipulate the controls, you can actually get some very nice sounds from this instrument. It's just that this is, this is something that Avid um, needs to improve upon. The built-in instrument that comes with Pro Tools that you can use for the rest of your life, even after you stop subscribing to Pro Tools or, you know, you stop updating should be updated because this was made in 2008 and it hasn't been updated since 2010. So that's 12 years ago. So it's the same sounds from 12 years ago. It's a beef I have with Avid and um, they've been told that by many people. So maybe someday they'll, you know, they'll fix, update this. But it's perfectly fine for our class. And I've had students, I've used sounds from this in film scores. Some of the sounds in here are really good. You just have to know how to tweak them. But for our class, Perfectly great for learning these basics. So what we're going to do is right here, right? We've got our light preset, our factory default. We're not, I'm going to teach you about this stuff later on down here. But for right now, we're just going to go to our factory default, our librarian menu. We're going to click here, right? And let me scroll back. And then let me move this down so you can see more of it. We're going to scroll up to 25 where it says bases. And I'm just going to pick... And uh, I'm just going to scroll down here and I'm just going to pick classic double bass, which is number 18. All right. And then you can see here that double bass has been loaded in. Don't worry about these controls for now. Just go to your preset menu and call in an instrument. And we're using bass. And there's all sorts of instruments in there. I'm going to record enable the bass. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And my bass might be a little bit more busy, okay? And I'm going to play along with the piano track. And let me just change the... You might have to do some what's called transposing. So on this keyboard, there's a button over here. Uh, well, you can't see it now. Let's see. There's a button over here which transposes the octave up and down. So I play this pitch. might have to transpose it down if you only got a 48 key controller from the college but you'll just have to see if the pitches are right for you all right so I'm just going to play a very simple bass line against the piano track and here we go and three and four and four and three and two and one and So that's so now this whole thing is feeling a little slow to me. So I want to speed it up. So let me just go for right now here, double click right here, and I'm going to go up to like 96, right? Here's the, here's the dilemma, right? Keyboard 
is the way that you enter MIDI into the computer. It's the most efficient way. There are other kinds of controllers and other ways to do it. But keyboard. Not many of you are trained pianists, I would imagine. So you have to develop shortcuts to help you get information in t- into the computer. And one of the shortcuts is to play it much, much slower. Okay? And then that'll help you out. Now, let me... Um, undo that and that's very simple to undo something right command Z and that disappears now let me show you whoops let me show you something else I'm gonna do the same thing again and I'm gonna play a much simpler bass line and I'm gonna make a mistake in the middle and I'm going to show you how to start recording from where you made the mistake. Okay? And then we're going to work on our first edit bits. So I'm going to do the same exact thing I just did. Uh, well, I'm going to play much simpler as if I can't play keyboards. Oh, so two, three, and four, and... Play it in like this. Okay, so I made a mistake right there, right? Now, let me show you another little setup trick. In the upper left-hand corner, right here, let me get that in the middle so it's easier to see. Right here you'll see a little box with the letter A and Z in it. This enables our keyboard focus. What I want you to do is click on that so that it's amber and it's turned on. That's very, 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 very important because now what I can do is to zoom in and zoom out and a bunch of other things. I can just hold down the T, keep pushing on the T key, and to zoom out, I can push on the R key on the keyboard. All right, so I'm zooming in And then I can just scroll. Notice that I'm just with my mouse. Let's see. Uh, Okay, there we go. I'm just scrolling with my mouse. And you can do this with the trackpad also. Right? You see my fingers just going left and right. And the thing will move. So I made a mistake right here at measure six. So uh, let me see what what the chord's supposed to be there. So I'm going to just, if I click... So in other words, see that it's in the shape of a gra- gra- the hand right now. If I move up into the ruler area, see how it changes into a selector or a bar. So I can click right here and start from any of these places to play back. And you notice that the counter also changes. So I just want to see what chord I'm supposed to be on right here. Okay, so I'm supposed to be on a D chord right here. Okay, so now let me go to my selector tool, or I can just do it here. I'm going to click right on measure six over here, right? So we were back here somewhere. I'm just going to hold that there and click on measure six and notice the counter changes. And you don't have to worry about erasing this because when you play, it will automatically erase it and put in your new material. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Whoops. Uh, Command shift. And one, two, three, four. Okay. So, you know, this is very basic ABC stuff. You know what I mean? But I've got, you know, a graduate and undergraduate students. Some of you may have done some of this in other software before, um, but I've got students in the class that have no experience at all. So I got to start like this. But we, once I see what your skill level is, I'll customize your work to make it a challenge for you. So let me speed this back up to 96. Hit the return key. I'm back at the beginning. Okay, 
that's fine. But I want to get some, I want to change some pitches, but I don't, can't play the piano really well. So how do I do that? Well, you hi, notice I want to make sure that no, none of the tracks are selected. So I'll hit option and click because if you click up here, you'll notice that everything becomes selected. So you want to make sure that you're always uh, making sure that all these are unselected. So I'm going to highlight this track here, the bass track, and uh, down at the bottom here, bottom left-hand corner, right here, you're going to see a line with an upward-facing arrow. You're going to click on that. And this is going to bring up the MIDI editor. Okay? And I'm going to just hold down the T key and zoom in. And those are our MIDI notes. Now, notice that this has a redundant toolbar. When you're working in the MIDI editor, these are the tools that you use. When you're working in the edit window, these are the tools you use. So let me show you how you can tell which one is active. If you'll notice, it's very subtle and you have to pay attention. Around the border, this is a yellow or gold line. And if I go back out here and I, let's say I click there, that gold line has now gone around this area here. Okay? So that's how you tell which one is active. So if I want to see the base and I open it up and it doesn't show up, there are there's this over here. These are called the tracks list. If you just click on base on the far left, let me zoom in so you could see this, right? This gives you the list of all the tracks you've got. And if I click here, that makes it active. And you should see the notes. Great. And notice that they're a different color than the instrument. The instrument is kind of that bluish color. So this right here, just click on that once, this guy here. And that should get it back to the right color. Okay, now what I want you to do is to turn the grid on here. To just click on this right here so that it's blue, not purple. We don't want purple, we want blue. But you still don't see a grid, right? That's because the grid is not enabled here. So you turn that on and boom, we've got our grid. Now let me zoom in and you can see that there are different lines that are uh, columns that are different color than others. The darker blue, oops, excuse me. The darker blue, the darkest blue, that's the beginning of each bar. So you see bar two, beat one is the darkest. Bar three, beat one is the darkest. Then the next level of darkness is each beat. So this is a little darker, a little less dark here. That's beat two beat three, beat four. In between here, these are our subdivisions of the beat, and they're the lightest color of them all. And the way that you change that is over here. Right, so I change that to an eighth note, and now I've only got, I've got half the amount of grids. If I change it to a quarter note, right? So you can customize that, and I go back and forth depending upon what kinds of notes I'm using. So. How do you navigate here, right? Okay, so I'm going to use the hand tool, the grabber, and I'm going to click on this note. If I want to go to the next note, I can just click on it like this, but I can also hit the right arrow, right? And the back arrow here. Now, the first pitch is fine. I want to change the second pitch. So if I go here, right, I want to change that pitch. I can do this many ways. There, You can just take this and slide all the way up and down, right? And if I don't like that, I can just do Command Z. It undoes it. Or I can use the up arrow to move the note up by half steps. Right? So that's now a C. And watch. Let me show you something here. Let me move this over so it's easier for you to see. Okay. Watch. This is our piano roll. This, that's basically the piano roll editor, it's called. Notice that this is a piano, right? So you got C, F, right? And they when you hover over with the mouse, 
the note becomes dark. Well, if I click on this, you see that the note is dark over here when I'm clicking on this, right? So if I go up, you can tell what pitch it is because it gets, it lights up. So I want that to be a C and let me listen to that now. Great, and then I want to go here. This, this note's fine, so I wanna go here. So that, I wanna make the second note a different note. So this time I'm gonna go down. I think that might work, so let me back to the beginning. Right? Now, and I can just go through here and I can make all of these notes into a nice bass line with just two notes per measure. Right? So basically, if you wanted to, you could just play the same note in over and over again and then hunt to find the notes that fit with the chords. All right? Okay, so let me just take a look over here. Everybody with me? Any questions on any of this so far? All right. So what I need, what else I need for this, let me go back to this view, is a melody and maybe a melody might be played on a different instrument. And so this is what your first assignment is going to be. And this is going to be, the first draft is going to be due next week. And the second, the final will be due in two weeks. I want you all to pick a song. Don't pick a rap tune, not because I don't like it, but because we have goals and things that we need to get through. And we, I want you to pick a song and that has a simple melody. Uh, if you're a grad student, you can make it more complicated. And simple chords, if you're an undergraduate student, it could be a pop tune. Uh, it could be just a tune, a, a simple tune. Put the chords in very simply like I did here. Add a bass line and then play a melody note, right? So get it in on three tracks, one time through the song. Um, so that's going to be what's due for next week. And how do I want you to work on this? Right? So let's say it was, oh, I, I, I don't know. Just pick a song like the, it's going to be the first maybe 60 seconds, just one time through the verse or maybe twice through the verse. Just, just get, get something in there and start working on this and getting this together and just you got to work on it. So how do I want you to work on this? I do not want you to spend two hours next Tuesday night doing this. What I want you to do is organize your work over the next week so that you've got four working sessions, half an hour to 40 minutes each, right? So the first day, you're, you're going to pick a song, right? You're going to do that. Before, that's not a working session. You're going to pick a song. And if you want it to be a song that you wrote, you can do that too, but just very simply, very, I want it to be very simply because we're going to work with manipulating the notes. We're going to work with creating accompaniment patterns. We have a lot of work to do, but I want you to get used to putting data into the computer and then manipulating it. Okay, so um, the first day you're going to get, you're going to figure out your song. You're going to get your folder on your desktop that all your projects are going to go into. You're going to create a new session. You're going to name it properly. And then you're going to open up Pro Tool. You know, you're going to get your, your Pro Tools is going to open up. And you're going to go through and you're going to set up all your preferences in Pro Tools. You're going to also set up your system preferences in Apple, your Mac, if, if, you have, if you're using a Mac. You're going to set up that and you're going to do your setup in Pro Tools. And you're going to instantiate. You're going to make sure you've got a click track. And you're going to make sure that you've got four instrument tracks ready to go. That's it, right? That's your first day. That should take you about half an hour, 40 minutes. The second day, you're going to put your piano, your bass, and your melody instrument or your two melody instruments. And then you're going to play and you're going to get your piano part in. Basic, simple chords. They could be three notes, whatever. Then 
the next day you'll do your um, your bass and your melody. And your melody might be on two instruments. It might be on one instrument. You might play the first uh, eight measures on one instrument and the second eight measures on a second instrument. Then the next day, the last day, you're going to go and double check all your work. Okay? That's what you're going to do. So your first day is going to be set up. Your second day is going to be instruments and piano part. Your third day is going to be bass and melody. And your fourth day is going to be checkup, double check. Half an hour, 40 minutes. I don't want you to spend more than two hours a week on your homework, but you, you, it, you do better when you schedule your time and do it over you know multiple days because what you're doing by taking that approach is you're looking at Pro Tools four times over the next week and you're getting used to it. To learn this software, you have to get around and, and understand what you're looking at, where things are, and when it's new f- for you, just the repetition of that will ingrain that in you better. Um, I'm going to write all this out and email it to all of you, so don't worry about that. The one last thing I want to go over, and this is very important. So, this is my Recording Studio Fundamentals Right, this is the project that I just did. So what you want to do is to upload this. You want to make sure that the session folder is closed. You do not, and what you want to do is right click on the session folder, the session folder, not the session file. I've said this now five, six times during the class. Some of you are going to click on the session file, but what I want you to do is folder, folder, folder. You're going to right click on this and you are going to compress this. And this zip file is what you are going to put into this folder here. Just like that. Boom. All right. That's what you're going to do. So you're going to compress the session folder and you're going to upload the zip file that comes onto our OneDrive. If you do this, an ic.ptx.zip, I'm going to tell you you didn't hand it in, right? That's how you'll know that you've done the wrong thing. If it says .ptx.zip, I'm just going to toss that. What you need to do is the session folder. Right. So that's a good question. Who, Jay, who is, oh, that's Justin. So, right, let's take a look at uh, expand again. You could pick your own instrument. And you don't have to use acoustic piano. If you want to use electric piano that's an expand, you can do that too. But I just, this is easy. So if we, let me put expand in here. Expand to. There's so much stuff in here, right? Just keep things simple. Brass and woodwind. So maybe you'll have a flute and, you know, and it's, you just have to go through here. 36, you can get through here. Um, you know, vocals, what, what, Figure out an instrument that you like, but you can spend hours looking through this librarian, which is why it's, uh, don't try to explore all these sounds. It, you'll be there forever. You won't get anything done. So just keep the idea simple, bass, piano, and you know a, a woodwind instrument for the melody for now, uh, or whatever you choose. If you want to use an acoustic guitar for the melody, you can do that too, but don't go crazy looking through sounds. Try to find something fairly quickly because you could spend literally 45 minutes just hunting through the menu to find a sound. Okay, so that was a lot of information today, an incredible amount of information. I don't expect that you got everything. That's what the review video is for. If you need anything, I'll get this up um, by Friday at the latest. Uh, hopefully I'll get it up tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm in good shape with my film score, so I'll have time tomorrow before uh, Audio MIDI 1 to get this up. And, right, everybody...
right? I gave you a link to my YouTube channel, playlists, recording studio fundamentals, right? It'll be up here. We'll get into much more detail about this whole thing and next you'll week, see a, won't have, like a list of classes up here as the semester goes on. So for example, if I go back to uh, to these, let's see if I go to film scoring uh, class four, Right, you'll see right here, my film scoring class, April I've got all these. 2004. These are all the different classes. Didn't see it coming, didn't hear it coming. When they exploded. You know, it's kind of a drag because YouTube um, will demonetize some of these for me and they will uh, put commercials on it. And uh, so, you know, you'll just have to skip the commercials as they come up, which is a drag. But uh, I, I actually pay $19 a month uh, for YouTube, so I don't watch commercials at all. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think that's it for today. Yes, you could change. Y yes, you could edit or change. You could change the instrument after you've input notes, but I would avoid doing that for next week because I haven't taught you how to rename the MIDI clip, which I'll do next week. All right, if you remind me. So just pick, find the instrument, just go for it now because you can redo it for the, for the final. All right. Let's see. Any other questions? Cedric. Okay, great. All right. So with that, I think that we, unless there's any other questions, we are done for today. Um, you know, these classes are going to be like two, two hours, 10 minutes. Um, because we're not taking a break in the middle. I find that to be, you know, if you need to take a break in the middle for five or 10 minutes to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water, you feel free to do that. Uh, typically, I just go straight through. Uh, it's hard to take a break in an online class, I find. It takes difficult to get everything going again. Um, anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, for coming here. Um, upload your... Um, Musical blueprinting, I see one, two, three, right? One. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that some of you uploaded a document. Oh, you've, you've uploaded both. So I'm missing some of these here, right? Get them in by tonight because I do want to go through these tomorrow and get you some feedback. I probably won't do a, a video feedback on these. Um, I'll probably just write you something back on, a, on an email, but you will typically be getting... Um, feedback videos on your work which are really helpful I find anyway that's that's the dealio for today my friends get that assignment in please by tonight uh, Casey I gave you a couple of extra days because you got registered late so if you get yours in by the weekend that would be great but I, I want to stay on top of all this stuff and not fall behind so have a, have a great week everyone and I will catch you guys next week thank you so much for being here thank you so much Thank you. Okie doke. Do the best you can, all right? Don't fret out about it. We'll get you through the class.